Welcome to Godseeker. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. The current message? Foot soldiers. There is evidence we experience in our daily lives, when we have eyes to see, which matches what God tells us in the Word of God. It will be an ongoing battle here, a spiritual battle where the enemy of our souls wants to make life difficult and destroy our ability to have a God effect while we are alive and ultimately cause us to turn from and thus be stolen from God and all he has for us. To expect life to somehow not be subject to this battle is a false narrative that can cripple us while dishonoring God and removes from us the privilege of joining him in the ongoing fight in the way he has for us to help. We are crippled by our never-to-be-met expectations where a life of comfort has become our aspiration, because in that hope, in that want, we are looking for the wrong thing, and it eventually crushes us. We are also more easily discouraged, disappointed, and hurt. To have the expectations and awareness of the supernatural spiritual battle ongoing around us at all times is definitely not to be afraid. It is definitely not to be downtrodden and think that this life is horrible. It is to join in the fight for the redemption of souls, which has been God's heart since our ancestors turned away from him. It is to be part of God's army in the place he has for us. Because God is love, ever since the breach in relationship between humanity and God, because our ancestors decided they wanted to lead themselves. God's singular goal has been to provide that place of reunification to him through reconciliation, to provide the way for us to come home, not where he forces us ever, but where, like the father of the one known in the Bible as the prodigal son, God waits and hopes and looks towards us providing for us even when we don't know or choose to deny him. While Jesus now enthroned intercedes for us at the right hand of Father, partnering for the power of God through the Holy Spirit to continue to run through the earth and touch us one by one, one through the other, so that we have the opportunity to look, turn, and find him again. Meanwhile, in God's heavenly presence, the angels and saints are partnering for the return of souls as well. Before him who is love, in love with him singing, Holy, 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 Lamb of God upon the throne. And the prayers of the saints are collected in bowls that an angel offers up on the altar of God's will, so that the power of God is then released in response and sent forth into our midst in a way that demonstrates and reveals this unspeakable joy from this unimaginable person, the supreme Godhead, who is unfathomable in every regard and made us loving us infinitely in our mess, exactly as we are. This is happening right now in heaven for all of us still here in this temporal life and is described in the biblical book of Revelation, which St. John wrote years after Jesus had returned to heaven to capture what the Holy Spirit allowed him to see during an extraordinary visit during his lifetime to heaven. Yes, there is a war on, but that is not news. It has been and will be. And meanwhile, through all time, God loves us each one and together and longs for us all together to be returned to him and live in him as Jesus is in Father and Father is in him. Great, mystical, wondrous ways of God which defy what we think we know and stretch us beyond this towards his infinitesimalness. Such love toward the ultimate, final, and remaining victory of God over all forces of evil and destruction, where it is described that Jesus, for the joy set before him, went and endured the cross for this love, in the midst of this battle, in a way that he knew through this evil God would work his greatest good, enabling the reunion for us with him, the reunification he has always planned for the joy set before Jesus, not because the cross was to be enjoyed, but because of the extreme ultimate joy of partnering with God in his redemption plan. Jesus' heart, united with fathers for release of the Spirit to us, after Jesus had endured being murdered 
and was resurrected to life so that spirit could draw us back through Jesus to God Most High for the joy set before him. For the joy. Not because suffering was fun. Not because he looked forward to the suffering. But Jesus looked forward to what the Father would do through his suffering. If Jesus then is the one we follow, if Jesus is our example and our picture of the Father, then that is what we not only can expect, but this is what we should look forward to as well. Suffering, hardship, battle. God victorious for us and the multitudes through it. In days of old, this is what the martyrs have meant when they have said they would long to die for him, to give him their lives as he gave his. They did not mean they were death seekers for the sake of death or even for the sake of early heaven. Though once you know God, you kind of just want heaven. No, it's because they understood what God would do through their suffering, just as he had done through Jesus. We do not open up the doors of heaven for the redemption of each soul, but we partner with God in all his purposes through every aspect of our lives. And this also means our suffering. So not only is the suffering to be expected and the battle to be known as something which will be and cannot be avoided, but it is to be embraced as purposeful for the joy set before us. For the joy set before us, we endure whatever might come for the sake of the kingdom so that he would be known, so that more would know, so that more would see God, so the kingdom would be grown. We may never see the fruit of our suffering until we look God in the face in heaven. This is when he will let us see those behind us who are following in because of what God did through our suffering. There is no promise of knowing sooner, because for now, we will never have the full view. To understand the battle and our place in it better, we keep in mind the image of the one soldier in the foxhole. The images of war, where the general is in the control room with the other leaders and they are the ones with the strategy. The maps are laid out. They have the overview. And they look to see where what might be happening and what the strategy should be. And then they decide and release to the other leaders listening how to move the troops into position according to plan for what will work best for all. No one position or role better than another. Each one has a significant role to play. So that's who we are. We really are those little privates, those with titles which don't have that great ring to them. And we don't have authority. There is only authority over us, either God or the adversary. And so we choose which general our lives will serve. And if we say we are part of God's army because we are with him in this fight for the redemption of souls, then we wait in our position. We are down in our foxholes where if we try to see what's going on, we completely do not have the overview. And then when the time comes because we are listening, because we are paying attention, then, 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 we hear the Holy Spirit's nudge. We sense it. We hear it with our spiritual ears. And then we embark. We go forth on the mission with him, the one to which he has called us, to do the next step, period. There is no other God like our God. There is no other God like our God. The God who in the battles that are, still is there fighting for every soul. Fierce, unrelenting, beautiful love. The way he fights is not always the way we picture the word fight. It means the same thing, and yet it manifests in a different way. The weapons of our warfare are not the same as the weapons of this world. They are mightier. They are spiritual. And so we recognize that we are in a battle. We recognize it will always be this way here. It will never be any different. We use that as encouragement and not discouragement. For once we have recognized this, our expectations shift. We understand better that it will never be heaven here. 
And through that understanding, it helps us be more situationally aware so that God can use us exactly in that fight. This is life satisfaction and joy. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled with your glory, Hosanna in the highest. God is king. He reigns. The battle is everywhere. Holy Spirit has a strategy. We are his little foot soldiers of love. We are his little foot soldiers standing up for justice and peace. We are his little foot soldiers just to do his will. We do not carry the responsibility to decide strategy. We are told to stand firm and watch what he will do for us. To stand firm and put the armor on. To stand firm and follow our king. This is our blessing. This is our destiny. This is our role on earth and to heaven. And each role in this army, in this war, which he has won, but which we still fight, is of vital, crucial importance. God bless you as you seek him for today. God bless you as he is your singular goal and you learn to lean on him more and come into the rest of how this world works and how he longs to use you through it and how he already is. Listen to the song Restore from the album by the same name. You can find it on my YouTube channel. Just search under my name. This song, Restore, is a prayer letting God know we are aware that he is the force which brings his way into the earth until heaven. There is a choir of friends from other churches who accompany me in the singing of this prayer. Together with our different backgrounds and assignments, we symbolize how God wants to use the many of us together to accomplish his work as we rely on his power. Let Restore become a musical prayer of your heart. Let's conclude with these few verses from the Bible. We're reading from the letter that St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians. It's the second letter in chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Thank you for joining in. God Seeker messages are brought to you by Eagles Nest Foundation. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. Until next time, remember I am praying for you. Use the song Restore as a prayer and keep seeking God.